what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be more of the jeepers creepers 5 story from alistair we're just going to pick back up where i left off in the last video with trisha jenner being reintroduced if you haven't watched those last four videos please check them out so you're not lost during this video but in a more remote isolated part of pertola county two young couples are driving down a lonely country road in a black car the boyfriend driving named aaron is taking them to a place but won't reveal where because he wants it to be a surprise. His girlfriend, Abby, says she hates surprises, but he assures her, assures her that she'll love this one. Betty, who is sitting in the back with her boyfriend, Joe, is uneasy about all of this, saying she hasn't seen another car or any gas station for miles. Joe says he can't get an internet connection on his phone. Abby and Betty both check their phones and find that they can't get a connection either. Aaron tells Abby to check his phone, but his is no different. She says there must be a weak signal out here. Aaron says he was hoping to make a live video tonight. Joe asks him why he brought a bag of torch flares with him. Aaron says they'll be they'll soon find out because they're almost there. He drives up further up the road and stops the car. In front of them is a windmill, several abandoned buildings, and a dirty sign. The four step out of the car and get a closer look at the sign. It says, Welcome to Longleaf. Abby and Joe have both heard of, about this place, but Betty hasn't. Aaron says it's a ghost town. Joe points, Joe points out there's there's a quite a few ghost towns in Petrola. Aaron says this one is different. He explains that 23 years ago, this small town was abandoned practically overnight. There was speculation about the reason why a failed economy, a native curse, a contagious disease. But there were rumors that a number of townspeople were kidnapped and murdered. It was said the man who did it chased after people down the highway. Abby is struck with fear by this, but Joe is confused. Abby asks him, you know who Derry Jenner is? Joe replies, yeah, the college kid who got stalked by a truck driver during spring break. Everyone knows that story. Abby says that truck driver killed Derry along with a load of other people. Betty is visibly scared, but Joe reassures her that even if it's all true, that truck driver is long dead because the police in Poho shot him. Abby is angry with Aaron for bringing them out here, but he asserts there's nothing to be scared of because there's not there's no one out here except them just then a crow lands on top of the sign and makes a loud call betty jumps and lets out a little scream angry she scares the crow away and they all start laughing aaron suggests they explore the place and get some footage aaron drives them down a main road he stops and lights up a couple of torch flares and throws them revealing a street filled with debris overgrowth abandoned smashed cars empty buildings with broken windows joe not interested in looking around volunteers to stay and guard the car Aaron, Abby, and Betty go wandering off while Joe hangs around on his own. He checks his phone and still can't get a connection. Noticing how eerily quiet the street is, he starts whistling loudly but stops when he hears someone mimicking his whistling from a distance away. It soon stops and goes quiet again. He assumes it's just Aaron trying to scare him. Not far away, the other, the other tree are looking around, or not far away, the other three are looking around in an abandoned convenience store filming with their phones. Most of the shelves are empty. Numerous items are scattered all over the floor. They realize the store must have been looted by the locals before they left. They exit the store and walk further down, finding an old bar with a broken electronic sign above the main entrance. As they approach, Abby steps on something sharp. Looking down, she sees a strange small object and picks it up. It's one of the creeper's sh shurikens. It gets the attention of Aaron and Betty. All three are perplexed by it. Abby turns it over and there in the middle of it is what appears to be the tip of someone's finger gasping she drops it betty says she wants to go back to the car and aaron agrees meanwhile joe is wandering down the street having a look around a gust of wind sweeps past and a loud noise is heard from nearby lighting a torch flare he walks to the bottom of the street and looks around the corner there he sees several abandoned cars in a in the street of an old church or and an old church with boarded up windows he spots an old brown truck parked nearby the by the cars it's the creeper's truck. Creeped out by it, he looks at the ground and notices something that makes him drop his flare. Aaron and the girls find Joe and see the look of shock on his face. Joe says he came looking around after hearing a nose noise and found this truck. Aaron approaches the truck and notices it has a cow catcher. He dismisses it as just an old rusty truck that was probably abandoned along with everything else in this town. Joe says someone has driven this truck very recently. He points at the dirt covered ground where Aaron sees fresh tire tracks. Aaron is almost stunned by this. Joe thinks this is the killer's truck, the same one used to chase Derry Jenner. Aaron says it can't be, but Joe knows it is. Abby agrees with him. Suddenly a man's voice is heard saying, yes it is, 
The four turn around and see a silhouetted man standing in the poorly lit street. You are trespassing in my town, the shadowed man says. A terrified Betty starts sobbing and hiding or starts hiding behind her boyfriend. Aaron angrily asks the man who he is. After a long pause, the man walks forward, revealing himself to be Jack Taggart Sr. He has gray hair, wearing bloodstained clothes. His eyes are pale white and speaks with a distorted voice. The town belongs to me. The four are terrified as they are speaking with the serial killer from 23 years ago, or as they think they are speaking with him anyway. But we, the fans, know that Jack is possessed and it's the creeper who is actually speaking. The winged demon has chosen Jack as its human instrument to do its work. The, the possessed Jack says, I am building a new house, a house of pain. Would you like to see it? He holds up a knife, the same knife that Jack used to battle the creeper. Terrified, the four start running as fast as they can back to their car. Now, I will say I love how you are continuing to incorporate aspects that were not fully fulfilled from that second movie. Because if you guys remember, there is a bit in the second movie where there would have been like some ventriloquist act on one of the coaches. I think it was Charlie. Um, and even in the first film, there was a scrap sequence in which the creeper actually spoke. So I like that we're seeing that explored here, that the creeper can actually talk, but we're not seeing it from the actual creeper. We're seeing it from jack taggart senior who he is controlling because he's clearly possessed him and i like how you're incorporating some of the others powers that the creeper has that we haven't fully explored such as the fact that we know he has telekinesis the third film that we got explored that but it was very cartoonish now you're exploring the whole possession thing which i think is cool and i don't think possession is too far stretched i think possession would be very in line with something of the nature of the creeper and i like what you're doing with these side characters at the moment everything seems very compelling very engaging and yet you still are not being overly reliant on the creeper just slaughtering a bunch of people you're building a lot of mystique and intrigue with just everything in this story being eerie and creepy and i love it to death i cannot wait for you to send me the rest of your jeepers creepers 5 story and i will continue to share it with you guys on my channel you can let me know what you think about alistair's story down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications that you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to all of my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video